that's still happening. You didn't stop that whatsoever, right? He didn't pick a hero that could have beat Bad Iron in the mid lane. I mean, I think there were a couple options that you could run, but in the end, you're gonna struggle a bit early, and I think Lorenoff should still have a decent game. I'm liking more of the draft for Gambit, but I can see the Alchemist cheese happening anytime, right? So you always have to be careful with the Alch. Yeah, that's true. You do have the Nyx, Nyx Assassin uh, for him in the jungle, though. So I'm going to be a little bit surprised, to be honest, if it works. I, I do a little bit. I, I'm going to be stronger for this Gambit draft than you seem to be anyway. I, I prefer it a little bit more. I, I'm okay with that, but I just, you know, whenever you see an Alchemist, there's always that point in my head where, where you think... Like, an Alchemist makes you throw away everything you've done about Dota because the game becomes mine. So if they do manage to get an early good Alchemist draft, I think Alchemist versus TB is also decent for the first 30 minutes of the game. Because like I mentioned, uh, heroes with good attack speed can easily build into mixed damage. And that's particularly counters TB, right? So you can see the Alchemist game. Uh, seeing an old build, for example, uh, with a Maelstrom, maybe even just to have that uh, against the TB, and then eventually in the older, of course. And I use that as a farming item as opposed to the more popular Battle Fury that you see these days. Alternatively, Radiance is also fine this game. I think it's not as much burst damage against TB. No, I, I, that's the thing I really wouldn't like Alchemist to see go for, though, is that's the problem with the Nyx Assassin, right? Because then you just get ganked super easily in your jungle, and, and those skills are almost free. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't think the, the Radiance is a good build this game, simply because the Nyx exists. It's yeah, that's, that's true. I agree with that. That's why Mail might like more, but it's still yep. the same kind of risk with Nyx, it, but at least it's more controlled. It is. It's more controlled, and you're very less likely. At least if you, you're going to know the Nyx is coming, and you get a chance to get off the Chemical Rage. Yeah, and if you're not attacking stuff, it's not going to bounce to him, especially yep. if you don't see him, so that's another point to be made. The lane doesn't seem too difficult for them against this, the Beastmaster. Nah. I think I can somewhat deal with the nah. harassment early. Level 3, we'll see if this changes. Nyx is not the best laning support, even with a Mana Burn build. Mid lane, though, we're... Actually, Lycan's doing fine. Top lane, Blizz is going to die, thanks to Pantomim. That was a nice little pure fire punch towards the end, and... Yeah, it's difficult to lane this until you hit level 3 when your boards can actually do something to the Alk. And Alk is very uh, conditioned to just go for your board directly, because you have Gribble's Greed to make them worthwhile. That, that's actually a really good point. The Oracle as well with a really nice attack range. Yeah, he's great against Gr Master. Terrible damage, but but great range to just continue annoying oh, him. Nice. I, I completely forgot, you know, the full efficiency of uh, taking sentries out with the Alk. Extra 15 gold. It does work, even though sentries give plus zero gold. Yep. Because no, every unit works, which is why I think it works on zombies too. It does, yep. There's a lot of really good Envy Glimps yelling at his teammates to not destroy Tombstone so he can just farm gold. Yeah. There's just a lot of good Envy Glimps. No, uh, that's very true. Bad. If, if I ever made a Dota, I would love to make a Dota wiki one day where everything is explained, just MV shouting at his teammates, mm. you know, one clip for every single That'd thing. That'd be great, actually. And people the, would definitely enjoy this that. This Lycan is actually off to a fantastic start here, really quite well. surprisingly. Uh, I, I think that's mostly to do with the fact that it's still only level 2 Napalm. Maybe level 5, we're going to be beginning to see a little bit of a shift, uh, especially here with the Arcane Aura from the Maiden. He's going to be pretty free to just continue spamming these Napalms using Firefly quite liberally, and already we see like him somewhat off to the jungle for now here, just farming a quick little camp as he's going to be going straight for the naked Necropoke. See, but I think Lorenov is playing this lane appropriately. If you want to really win the lane, you would go for a Flame Break build and push a Lycan out, you know, show that you can win the lane as well. But he's going for a, a build that is purely kill potential. The idea is to, that since Lycan is not building boots, low, you Firefly and Dalton, dive the tower, and there's nothing they can do to help him, unless the Oracle TP's inside. So the whole point is, Blizzy harass the Oracle enough so they can't TP immediately, and I'm just gonna go get the kill, as he now secures the minute four room. No support rotations. Yeah, no supports rotating over, which is a bit surprising, but the Nyx Assassin does need to stay top here to continue applying pressure. Uh, our TB as well is having a little bit of a difficult time, but he now does have about a third duration left of the Metamorphosis. Uh, level 2 now, so doing a bit more damage, he's able to fight off the Rubik with the Mirror Images alone, which gives him pretty much the free reign over this lane for now. Yeah, Legion uh, doesn't... he struggles against TB because he can't trade easily. Top lane though, they go for the Alk. Nice Fortune Zen to root both of them, but the boar slows the Alk. Can they get the kill? No! Instead, Pantoim actually murders the boar making sure that the Al can get away with a, a nice little south there. The Rachio is... Yeah, that's going to be the advantage of uh, having the Oracle, basically, uh, against two melees. Is that's ba he re rarely could ask for a much better lane than the uh, foreign Oracle. So he's, he does tend to get crushed in lane versus most people, but when you draft two melees against him, he's going to be that's pretty happy. Help. Yeah, because you, when you trade against supports, you only can trade with your, when your combo's available, right? And then... And you're great then, but any other time you're training against them, you feel very weak. Yep, Despite uh, your superior BAT, 
And if, if you do Radiant's trade with your combo, then you don't have that for a kill potential. You don't have it for a save. So, so that that presents other openings for for better teams to then uh, exploit. That is, we have now the five minute wagon here. Lauren off. You're probably just going to be looking for farming. And yes, the, you said that earlier, this is this is a killing build, but it's also the farming build. It's true, the most effective of taking Ancients, which also, can we check if there's any ancient stats yet made for Lorna? No, it doesn't seem... Because usually mid-bat mid rider, because he has so much experience early, he's much more effective at taking ancient stacks despite the nerf. Whereas off-lane bat rider did get hit pretty hard with that nerf. Mid lane doesn't, honestly, because you have so much damage from Firefly anyway. And it's more, more bad is more about the magic resist being taken away from ancients than it is about the sticky napalm. Denied. Feeling. Nice deny there by Pumper. Announces it. Happy with himself. Rubik's heading mid lane to try and contest the rune. The DD will spawn top. I presume Rebel knows about it. Yep, he's just gonna get, deny it with the wolves and run away. Just defend the tower, he's coming out of the jungle. Very good awareness, right? A lot of people really might just AFK that. jungle with the Lycan, but he knows he needs to push out this wave lest he lose a lot of map pressure, or a lot of control anyway. He's got really good assets, honestly, against the Bat Rider. He's not giving him any chance to take advantage of his build. Here's the equivalent of when you, wait, sorry, the... Rubik could be in trouble. Metamorphos has been popped. Cheshire Cat is just fighting against Pubber. Cheshire Cat really committing for this kill. Nice overwhelming odds to get the extra speed on the creeps. Fortunately, they don't have the damage to really bring down Pubber. I think TB with meta is too scary for Legion. In fact, Cheshire Cat needs to get away. Yeah. That's just free hits that you're giving Zani. Yeah, especially maybe with a regen on the way, that would explain it. But yeah, that's a very bold move to be making with no regen left here. Just taking two free CS out from a, a TB. He'll go, he'll do that all day. Doesn't miss any CS and potentially now a first kill as the Bat Rider running on over. Easy kill with the lasso there in the waiting arms of his friendly little demon. Well, well played. Zani, uh, right? Zani, yeah, Zani, yes. And uh, thanks to Kips, by the way, for the pronunciation. Trying to do our best. We never know. When you get a Cyrillic name, you never know. Is this written in actual Roman letters, or is it Cyrillic? Should I pronounce it that way? Never, you never know. You never know. Uh, Rubik, or sorry, make that our Oracle most likely dead. Does have the Fairy Fire to bait him out a little bit more, but Lizzy quite tanky here already. Level Had the ulti more. now. Yeah, the boar that's does make a big difference. Yeah, and they, they have booted both the Legion and the Rubik out of the lane here, so that's going to allow TB to very, very comfortably transition into the jungle. He's more or less pretty happy with how this went. 45 and 12 is not amazing, but into the jungle already, he's going to be happy to do that. But the concern is, though, like you're giving a Lycan and an Alchemist a fair amount of space, and Batrider did a good rotation, but unfortunately it was bottom, so you can't turn that rotation into a tower. Or, well, you could, but it's the useless tower. In CIS, they do it more often than not, taking the offlane tier one, but still not as much. And that's why I think Pat should probably go top, taking advantage that Blizzy already has a fair amount of farm. Ooh. The Alk will be going for Battle Fury, so no weird builds, just traditional builds. I, I think this is the middle ground, right? Uh, between the males from Radiance we're talking about, right? Not so greedy and yeah. bad as Radiance, but still not effective for anything but farming. Making sure to kill the hawk before he goes. He, I hate nature. Yeah. Unfortunately, he gets the hawk but misses the ward here quite crucially. So he probably thinks it's going to be quite safe, especially with this fresh sentry ward placed down. But does he know that might come back and bite them in the butt here? Put them in a duration left on that. So make sure to check the jungle in a little bit for a potential mix assassin gank. You can see he's still hanging out here. Ah, uh, he's going to lose it. Uh, look, TB is doing a typical uh, walk now toward triangle. Most TBs do this. If you actually watch RDO, very good TB will always do this, where you actually leave a support, just have experience, and defend the lane. And in exchange, you just go to the triangle, Dyer's farm safely. Chester Cat knows this as well, and wants Radiant to punish this by trying to duel the, the uh, CM. Not going to happen just yet. Instead, they rotate a Rabel, and they will should be able to get this tower relatively easy. Yep, I think there's a little level 2 Necronomicon, right? Yeah, okay. You can tell by the size of the Necros. That's what I thought. I wasn't sure, though. I'm, I'm sitting further from the monitor today. I, I am a like it's spam, so that's why. They're going to go tower for tower here. Donnie does have himself the meta to use up. He doesn't want to use it yet in case they try and defend. Oh, interesting. He maxed meta. That's interesting. Usually you don't see this on TV, by the way. Usually the the popular build on TV, if you watch like very common TV players like RTO, Costa Rile, or Sunny Boy, for example. They're all Americans. Uh, they they like to take two points of meta, max for your image first, tower, even one point of reflection tower. for fights, and Radiant then they max meta. So it's interesting that they max his meta first. It's not the most common build in competitive, at least in pale. Nice, say covers life. Yeah, they, they don't want to feed Cheshire Cat here any dual damage. You, you see though what I was talking about in the draft where Lycan is just sending his units and he doesn't actually have to commit himself. So Lycan is very safe, he stays behind, keeps farming, but his units might have still killed Pubber. 
So they force rotation just with units, which as far as they're concerned, is a huge deal. Yeah, I mean, he was there as well. He was just too slow to keep up. He did, uh, he was macroing, I suppose, himself on over as well, trying to body block. But of course, he has got no chance to body block a mate. I mean, she is swift as the wolves of Ice Rack. <laughs> After all, <laughs> you try to body block a maiden, you're like, wait, am I just faster than her? And you just, it's so difficult because she's just walking forward, she has too little movement speed. Necros to counter Necros, I mean, they're similar timings, honestly, not bad for Blizzard. Oh, this is a Necro 1 compared to the Necro 2. He's going to be going for a different item as they actually will get a kill there onto the Necro 2 carrier. Got a little bit too aggressive. Looks like they catch him with the Vendetta. And it was simple stun, and then off he goes. Vendetta will take away your Feral Impulse, which is a bit of your healing, right? Not bad. Uh, and in the top lane, which is just her cat. Oh, well, the opportunity. They also use the Fortune's End. And that should root the TB. Is that enough for them to catch up to him? Those ghosts, no, actually the slowing ghosts didn't come in time, which means they can catch up to Zani. He's now in trouble. Do on top, Alchemist even joins in, and that's going to be a kill for Phantom. Mm, he had a TP there. Just... Yeah, I, I guess not. Because there was, the, the, he saw the Rubik coming by as well. I, does Alchemist point in his stun? He doesn't. Oh, he now, does. now he does. He just he, got it for He did kill. not before the kill. Now I checked. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was. I was curious. Maybe he was. He might not know it though. It's kind of hard to guess what level acid spray is at, right? Like, what you're gonna take the ticks yeah. for damage and calculate it based on your armor. It's not that easy. Yeah. So I can see why he might have thought, oh, they can just kill me unless I hide. He also made a misclick there up top. It's not a big loss. He's got his Falcon Blade up and running next to oh, go in for the S and Y. So there's lots of stats here for yeah. RTB. We have seen the Falcon Blade used a bit by. Uh, Heroes that need HP and mana, right? Because that's the main two attributes. Like, damage is nice, but it's most about the HP and mana, otherwise you would... And they're just a substitute for drums. That's a bit cheaper. I think it's pretty good for... Necro 3 finished up here, just be shy of the 12-minute mark. Our uh, Drakio Alchemist, of course, doing Alchemist things. His net worth beginning to explode already. Not too crazy, though. He's only 2k above the Bat Rider. This is just showing that at least in the lane they can control them. Chain shift though, with a duel, they go for the Bat Rider. Mark kill, but they should be able to get it regardless. The Freezing Field does slow them down a bit, but Hover is going to eventually die at this rate. They just use the unit, and he kills the Necronomicon unit, which guarantees yeah. Rable the kill. Last will, man. 500 damage on that, so it's doing... A CM? That's cute. It's doing 400, the break. Yep, good luck. There's the Impale. Dude, as a Nyx, there's no way you're getting the Vendetta Impale combo on an Icon. You, you simply have to open up with the Impale, yes. and then you're losing so much of the vendetta damage which is pure right so so it really sucks to miss out on all that damage but there's really no other way there in fact i think it's a little bit greedy i, I, I think it's personally safe to say that if you set up that sun with vendetta you got blizzardy follow up with the roar ah, but you do have false promise available that's yeah. that's always the catch so yeah it's a bit hard you, you don't want to just open up with a roar or, or just have them immediately get purged off but that's why i was surprised with the beastmaster pick like if you look at your lineup like okay this is a good beastmaster pick right and it's good against elk and lichen but that's only if you don't have an LC and an Oracle to help you. They have so much save, and this save is particularly weak against the uh, area damage, right? Because if you stun a bunch of people, you can't save them all. Die. But if I'll you stun a single person with Primal Roar, yeah. False Promise, he's fine. Yeah, he is totally fine, even. Uh, the only issue is if Radiant they want to double commit Oscar. there. I mean, really, realistically, you have to double commit either onto the Legion or onto the Oracle with both the Roar as well as the, the Lasso. That's the only way you connect on one of them and make it impactful, right? I also was expecting the lanes to go much better. So was uh, I. To, to make the, the Beastmaster and the Batrider's other assets more palpable, right? More important. Like the the Beastmaster's huge burst damage with the Zoo, the Batrider's huge burst or, or magical damage in general. I think those assets can still be used this game, but Radiant's they didn't really get them, tower. which yeah. makes me now side quite heavily with the Windstrike strap. They're doing much better. The smoke's going to fail as well by Windstrike. They head top initially. They uh, then are going to rotate bot lane as there was a, a counter smoke by Gambit. So they just kind of dodge each other out. Dracula was trying to farm as much as he could and still is. Okay, interesting build. So you go for Battle Fury, Emili, uh, Sanjin, Yasha, which is normal, right? Mid-game kind of battle Alk. And then you go right into the BKB. So that means that you want to fight as soon as possible because when you get that BKB early, the idea is the 10 second BKB is one of the biggest points of inflection that you can get in Dota. Uh, you're pretty much free for a whole team play, especially with an Oracle covering you from Primal Roar, which is realistically, or the Lasso, which is the only thing they can do against. Does Press the Attack not pierce uh, BKB? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think so. No, it doesn't. Interesting. I didn't know that. So yes, the, the Oracle, the Oracle You made me doubt it there for a second. But I well, I wasn't sure either, because you said that, and I was like, yeah, that sounds like an interaction in Dota. For a while, Tether didn't pierce BKB. No, no, no. No, but press the attack makes sense, right? It's a way to balance it. You can't have a dispel that pierces BKB, be a, also give you healing and attack speed. It's what, the second ability for a Legion? Mm -hmm. 
I think it's a it's it's a nice balance, right? That's why in pubs many times your carry will activate BKB and be like, why don't you press attack me? Yeah, I can't, can't do it. They're gonna go for a fight yeah, though. The shape should use. Like missing him. Where's our Lycan? They're going for pubs. It's oh my goodness. <laughs> so remember that when Lycan activates shape shift, in case you guys don't know this, he does get a crit on top of that on him and his units, which is what happened there. Just she <laughs> just got critted twice by both himself and his units. That's pretty ridiculous. The, uh, the thing is, CM against Lycan is not that bad, much to everyone's surprise, because she can frostbite one of your units, which is that nice, and freezing field also saves you from a good chunk of Lycan's damage thanks to the bone armor. The problem, of course, is that you can't use freezing field every single fight, and you're still fodder if you can't use it. You don't have a team. Yep. Yeah, I would say she's she's generally quite good at him, except for when the Lycan actually has got his ulti active. Then it becomes a little bit more tricky uh, for the maiden to, to really just not get anything done. Uh, Lauren off. He's still being chased around. Look, that's a first. I love, this is the power of the new Feral Impulse. Look how little commitment the Lycan's putting to pushing Lauren off out of lane. And it's just so good. I can't believe Ice Frog gave him this buff. It's such a good buff. It's ridiculous how versatile Lycan is. And this is the kind of buff, by the way, if, that I like because this makes Lycan more versatile as a hero, gives you more options. So bad players can't play him, right? Bad players will still suck with Lycan. But a good player will know how to utilize all of his assets to take advantage of him, as we're seeing here. That's why he's back in competitive, but your pups are not seeing like it. That's an UI finish up for a TB, as he's going to be going for even more stats up next with a butterfly. That'll give him a little bit of evasion. I don't know if it's going to save him from a duel, however. Only 10 duel damage early on for Cheshire Cat. They've not really been looking to fight too much. It's a no. bit of a quote-unquote greedy draft, naturally, because you have two heroes that want to be jungling. Yeah, for the mid game greedy. Draft. For the majority of the first 25 minutes of the game. After yeah. that, your, your Alf is going to be ready to go. Your Lycan is going to be a little bit more willing to be engaging and starting fights as well. We can already see, basically, he just wants to kill a maiden and back up is the move. But they're going to go for, it looks like a tower here in the mid lane as the Metamorphosis is activated. Will that one strike? No, they have to make a decision. Dyer's are they going to defend it, or are they going to let this one drop? I don't have shape shift, so I don't know if it's smart to defend. So maybe they just cliff, wait out the time, maybe use the Oracle to be nearby. The Hawk is too dangerous as well, because the Hawk gives vision of whatever initiation you want to do. Yeah, they're going to let it drop. I think this is the Radiant wisest choice. I mean, your supports can be here, and maybe even your offlaner to put a bit of pressure, make sure they just can't get a free tier 2, but there's no point in rotating your cores. It's much better to just get your, uh, your main 2 cores. Much better to let the Alchemist farm for the next fight. Yeah, definitely. I think he should have BKB almost done. And in fact, they can kind of, oh, yeah, yeah, BKB's on the way. They could even go for a little bit of a counter push here. As soon as that Metamorphosis ends, they could look to become a little bit more aggressive themselves because now they do have this Shapeshift ready. They do have this 10-second uh, BKB on the Alchemist, which Radiant granted to the Alchemist right now with the BKB, SNY, and Battle Fury, he's not the scariest, but you don't really need him to be. I think you just you just need him to be out in front and, and maybe talk to the aggro here for the Lycan, who's going to be a bit vulnerable without his BKB. Maybe. So I'm just going for drums, and they're going to be going for the Roshan play now. Uh, drums build is really good on like it because it makes you super powerful, and honestly, the item is so cheap. It's been buffed to hell with the eight charges. Uh, the Roshan should fall relatively quickly. They have a the better Roshan lineup, but they are dire. So less space control for the more fun, which means that Gambit could have theoretically, but they should know about it. But they just can't do that. Get better. Yeah, the Gambit, they, they did know about it, but again, without the Metamorphosis up, like you said, they were really unfortunately able to do much about it here. DD run on the Batrider is not going to be the scariest thing, so Windstrike are going to continue on pushing and just doing their thing here. Nice advantage there now in favor for these guys. And uh, yeah, they're going to have to back off. Not a whole lot of vision as their top tower is being sieged by creeps. They're going to be able to finish this bottom tier one off with the mirror image illusions alone as there is going to be a smoke play heading to try and cut them off here from the river. Radiance top Who are they going to catch? I mean, Cheshire Cat, I think it's a blink dagger, so it's going to be the blink reveal. They're not really sure. Uh, they don't know about this. They should guess, though, because it's about the timing. Oh, that's perfect. He has double damage. We get to and that is going to get destroyed. Torn to shreds by Windstrike. That is the ideal kill, honestly. Mid laner also their best source of initiation, and honestly, a big source of their damage early. They yeah. wasted the shapeshift there, Dyer's but I think it's worthwhile just for that kill. Oh, I completely agree. This is going to open up the map a little bit more now. I mean, it's, it's a Batrider dead for what must have been around 45 seconds here. Uh, we've got the offlane at least push it in for the Beastmaster, but he's had not really nearly the effect they're looking for this game. They are just about equal in towers, but I would be surprised if Windstrike don't make a Radiant's serious effort for this tier 2 top lane. 
Uh, we'll see. I mean, the... I don't know, I don't know if Windstrike wants to commit too much to it, especially after the cliff, because you don't have the shapeshift to fight, and Batrider is already back with Maso. You want to play it more defensively? Yeah, well, unless the tower gets destroyed like that, oh my goodness! Never mind, with a like in Alchemist, maybe I underestimate how much damage this Alchemist is doing, but that assault, sorry, that uh, Hyperstone alone. Yeah, I mean, it's the, uh, it's just pure physical damage here coming out, not pure damage, just physical damage rather from the side. Right, Raw like damage. A like in an Alchemist, right, so that, that's going to be extremely effective against the towers. Obviously, he's not going to be throwing down stable concoction at towers, but all of his abilities buff his attack speed and whatnot here. Is they're going to be looking up to, to really kind of the push here? It's an interesting TP. Uh, just a farm, just a farming yeah. TP, honestly, to make sure the deep push the lanes, to put some pressure That's on TP, to also uh, make sure that the... I mean, Gambit was going to easily gank you there, so you make them waste a bunch of time and resources. You know TP is not going to do that. Oh, actually, Oracle is making them waste time and resources. Is he actually going to get away with that TP? No, they have a yellow scepter. All right, very cheeky TP there by the Oracle. Still heals a fair amount, though, and wasting a bunch of time for your bad rider. <laughs> going to dispel himself again. Pantomim just slowly walking home. They force a second Firefly. This man's very happy with this. In fact, they Wait, almost got barbecue. close enough to gank him again. Just get us thinking about it with his Invis rune. Yeah, it's a bit difficult with only the uh, with the Rubik there, though. You never really know, especially with the Nyx Assassin already showing a nearby with the Yule Scepter to counter initiate. Invis rune, they might try for excess vampire now. There's going to be the blink on the river. Fate will level one. That's going to be. Ma wow, actually, I'm surprised that the mana burn alone was really enough to remove damage, but it was. Yamich is here to kill, and that's going to be another 30. Sorry, make that 20 damage for our LC. Uh, the Rubik of the Nyx out of the field now. And this LC is more honestly playing like an initiator and like a tanky core than she is as like the pseudo carry that sometimes legions play as because dual damage i don't think is that important in this game but it's still nice to get a bit of extra damage here the duels are being successful it's a low cooldown spell anyway yeah i definitely thought that uh, the, the lc was going to get the ball rolling a little bit earlier but honestly gambit never forced the issue themselves either which is surprising because they did have heroes that could bring a fight early game uh, that are not weak Radiant's by any means. Uh, Beastmaster, Batrider, and Nyx Assassin all come to mind. The Maiden has to be very wary of her positioning because she's basically free Dyer's food for well, just down. about anyone on the side of Windstrike. But yeah, there goes another tier two tower now in the bottom lane. There's still no Fortify at the ready. And we still have about 50 seconds left on the Vegas. <laughs> whatsoever. I mean, thanks to the Aegis, he's quite safe. He doesn't depend as much on Chemical Rage and say a TP, for example, depends on Metamorphosis. You can still run away with BKB. Whereas if TP loses the meta, you're like, okay, fight's over, right? Yeah, and of course you have the LC who is in a very convenient position. She is yes. going to be the first line of defense. Oracle standing much further away uh, because... As the second line. As Double the second line. Yep. Very cold Oracle. He's taking the road trip with us. He yeah, got his hats. We got our fluffy hats on as well. Oh, we do. This alchemist, though, he's got to be a little bit careful. His Aegis is just about to expire here within a couple of seconds, 10 seconds to be exactly. But one strike very aware of this. They're now backing Die. up. They're just going to be looking to farm the enemy jungle on the way out. Radiant Let's see, they're gonna Oscar. keep on pushing here, Gambit. Or, I'm oh, sorry, that was the smoke. Oh, good smoke. Catch it from behind, yeah. Good scan, sorry. Oh, the scan, yeah, catch the smoke completely. Now, Windstrike should be able to fight this. Necronomicon, Exus Vampire nearby. Goes for the Oracle. That's the Metal Force that's activated, but the duel catches the Vampire. That's perfect. Lornov is down for the count. That goes for the Assassin. The ball has been squashed. And the only hero they really need to kill now, Exani, who does get a stutter off onto the Oracle. Oracle is accepting his death as Alchemist is slowly but steadily trying to murder Exani. The counter stutter by Yavin. It's not gonna keep him alive. They cancel his TP, and Zani was almost capable of destroying all of Windstrike, but was incapable of beating neither of their two main cores, which is the Alchemist and the Lycan. And that's exactly what Rainbow should be doing, by the way, in the team fights, chasing away the supports, murdering the backline, making sure that Alchemist can have a one v one scenario against the terrible. Yeah, they, they tried their best. Unfortunately, the Beastmaster didn't quite catch where he was in the fight. He looked like he was trying to initiate with with something, with a roar, perhaps. Radiant's he said the Nyx Assassin was the one to kick off that fight, trying to lock down the Oracle. Wasn't effective in the slightest bit at the end of the day. And now a 15k now worth lead for Windstrike. This is going to be at least two lanes of bear. Without Metamorphosis, you're not going to be too scared. We still have pressed the attack at the ready for the Dispel. They're threatening for it now, Lornoff nearby. They have no false promise, so they are going to be a little bit weak now. This is going to be the dual. will come out first. It's countered by Drakio as well. He's falling He's quite low, but the healing like, is too much. He is still alive. They needed to lock down that Oracle and are unable to do so. That is insane. 
has no right to live here. Look at this. He walks in without the chemical rage even activated. He's still not going to get killed. He knows the Legion and the Oracle are covering him, but they do catch him in the end. False uh, promise, false promise is ready. Right there. And that's going to save the out yet again. Wow. Talk about borrowed time, huh? That's the other ultimate. Yeah, but I'm gonna stab you. Uh, well, it's hey. an expression in English too, right? No. Is it really not? No. Living on borrowed time? No. Usually we say dead man walking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how are you gonna push the <laughs> melee racks, the range racks, walk away as Yamich is also gonna be safe? They tried an initiation on him, didn't really work out. Another good team fight. Yeah, this Alex, no. this Alex got damage now, yeah. I told you, dude, you never discount an Alex ever in a pro game. He cheeses you, and honestly, all they needed to do was win the lanes for Gambit, but their unsuccessful lanes led them to this situation there. He is pushing incredibly effectively as well, as they have all the Tier 2s down already. Roshan, he might be respawning as soon as in 20 seconds, could be a further three minutes after that. There's a DD rune here conveniently placed for Wind Strike as they're going to smoke up and perhaps look for the killing blow now on a Gambit. Gambit themselves, they're going to sully out here into the bottom lane just to shove this one out a little bit more. They still now do have the Metamorphosis ready and uh, available for our TB. Butterfly, but going to be going for Scotty next. Unfortunately, he's way too far away from that one to be uh, currently relevant. That's going to be a long solution. Roche as well, so two minutes. Good solution for the Alc Legion, Oracle, and plethora of healing. All, all of the healing, yep. Might, be, might have been a consideration before the Butterfly, honestly. Uh, but he does have to go for Butterfly. I think Radiant Butterfly's been redundant on TV many times. Because what do you help against? Physical damage. What do you already have a lot of? Armor. So do you really need that extra? I mean, what Reddit talked about it, and I kind of agree with them. Because in this case, the could just built MKB and get both mixed damage against your armor and a way to deal with your evasion. Yeah. That's a freebie. Yeah, that's, that is a freebie. Uh, not only the, the damage build, but also basically that top lane of uh, ranged barracks are now gone. They're going to go back and check Roshan, but be sorely disappointed when he needs a full another minute here to be uh, ready to offer some cheese to uh, the side of what's looking like wind strike here at this point. 19k up. This alchemist has basically had all but a free game. 2-0 and 5 here under Akio. He's having a very, very fun time indeed. Uh, our Lycan, not doing too much worse though, 7-1-1, one, one, and one, as he's... I mean, the thing is, is I don't want to... Like, who carried the early game, quote-unquote? It just felt like Gambit never really felt the pressure. I just think the choice of going for two single-target stuns versus days, honestly, that idea limited your early game potential so much. And I think the, the big Oscar, point was that you were trying Oscar. to take advantage of the Batrider early, and I didn't really... See Particularly because he lost the lane, and I don't know, or he at least tied the lane, which yeah, in a sense yeah. is losing, really. And I don't know if that's Lorinov's fault for playing too defensively, or if that's because the Lycan just played a great game. I think that's just kind of the result of the draft, right? I, I think if you pick something like a DP or a Pugna versus a Lycan mid, regardless of how the laning matchup actually goes, when the Lycan does want to go in jungle, he, he's going to lose his tower instantly. Whereas the Batrider simply doesn't bring the same amount of pressure. I agree. So, so they just never had anything to really force the issue, force anyone mid. How many games have we seen when there's just a Tide Hunter or a Bat Rider? Sorry, not a Bat Rider, a Tide Hunter or a Timber Saw sitting in the mid lane, yes, right? Yes, yes. That did, who who does that happened. this game? Yeah. And that no one even had to this game for a win strike. There's just very little tower pressure. Yeah, that's true. And and this reminds me actually of the game we casted yesterday for IPG, where we had an Invoker. We're like, oh, this Invoker's gonna pop off. He's Quas Wex, and Radiant the Quas Wex Invoker didn't move his lane or do anything for the first 15 minutes. And you go, well, what's the point of picking a Quas Wex Invoker then, right? I think it defeats the purpose of the hero. And in this case, I don't. It, it's not fair to blame Lorna particularly. It's just something that happened this game that they need to look at in the replay. Lorna. Yeah, the courier scouted them actually from the Oracle, so they're set up opposite here. Dyer on the Radiant side, Radiant on the Dyer. We'll see who to whose advantages will be. Lorna is going to use the Firefly for him to win. Look how, uh, I, I actually really appreciate how uh, patient Radiant's top Despite them winning by so much, they still don't want to give the enemy team any chance. Yeah, I mean, and they know. Creep are filtering in. They're pushing through bottom, so they're going to threaten tier fours. The tier three top lane also is going down. It's going to be the jump. They found the Beastmaster. A nice stun, though. That means the Alpha is going to be forced to stun himself, but they have two dispels. They stacked them here, unfortunately, so they might be able to punish that. But for now, Axis Vampire is going to be the first to go. Zani now playing into the damage here onto the Oracle, as they will buy back now onto our support. Okay. I think the Power Roar now set up the full Power Roar on TV. It doesn't really matter, though, because he lost the chemical rage. He might find himself again. He's going in for the second fight. Lycan's still alive. And now with the duel, they catch Zani and are capable of murdering him. As Diracho does the same thing GG. against Blizzy. That's the GG. 
I think even with, I think the GG came out because that was a not a great team fight, but win strike, not the best execution, and they still win, showcasing how far ahead they simply were. Oh yeah, I mean, it, it, unfortunately, it, it wasn't really close after the landing stage here between the two teams. The Alchemist came out. He